Welcome back. And this is the part we begin our conversation. But before we do that, let's bring you some reports. Since the incidents and abduction of school children 10 years ago, Nigeria has witnessed the abduction of more than 1,000 school children. And government at all levels are mapping out strategies to put an end to the ugly trend. Olain Kaujo in this report examines government's efforts through the Safe School Initiative in addressing issues of kidnapping of school children. Faced with the threat of kidnapping of pupils and students leading to low enrollment in schools, Nigeria became a signatory to the International Safe School Declaration. The Safe School Initiative is designed to promote effective programs and policies that will protect schools from attack as well as prevent corruption and promote accountability. The implementation of the Safe School program started in 2014 after the adoption of more than 200 girls at Government Secondary School Chibok in Brno State. Right now, the over 20 million out of school children, which Mr. President prioritized in the eight point agenda to get them back to school, the attack on school is a major setback. In 2022, a national plan for school financing was formally launched with an action plan to spend 144.8 billion naira in four years. But of this amount, only 15 billion naira was released early 2023. And since the protection of schools, students, teachers and educational facilities has become urgent, the Nigerian police force embarked on training of its personnel on schools protection. This court will operate in support of the school's protection squad to ensure our educational facilities remain free from danger and unwelcome incidents. Another interesting aspect is the establishment of the National Safe School Center to help improve intelligence gathering and response. We have been able to set up the center, command and control center. We have been able to also bring you know, uh, agencies together. Um, so that they can be responding when things happen. We have been able to uh, develop um, uh, an SOP um, that will guide our operations. Then we have been able to train so many people, um, particularly through the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, um, state desk officers um, for response coordination. For other key players, public awareness is pivotal to the initiative. Including local vigilantes, hunters groups, Retired security personnel, traditional and religious leaders would also be integrated into the security architecture, precisely in the area of intelligence battery, aimed at providing support in securing schools and peoples. With all these measures in place, it is expected that government and relevant stakeholders will intensify efforts to secure the school environment to enable pupils, students and teachers study under a conducive environment without fear of being attacked. Online Kaujo, NTA News. And I'm sure you recall the Kaduna State incident. Well, days after the abduction of school students at Kuriga Village, security agencies are intensifying efforts to rescue the victims unharmed. As the state government and relevant stakeholders keep putting heads together to ensure schools are adequately protected. Let's hear from Mohammed Umar Ajingi. Kaduna State had experienced a series of incidences of school kidnappings. The students of Kruger Village are the latest victims who the security agencies are still searching for their whereabouts. Few days ago, in this school, scores of students were taken away by the bandits during their morning assembly. The students of Greenfield University, as well as School of Forestry and Mechanization in Mondo, were once victims. But the state government, in collaboration with the federal government and security agencies, are working tirelessly to stop the incessant abduction of the students. He rest assured that the president is equal to the task. The very essence of the existence of government is to secure the lives and properties of the city of the He has tasked the entire security architecture in the country to go all out and get back uh, his safety. 
We thought uh, we have seen the end of this kidnapping in Kaduna State, only for it to rear back in a very devastating manner. And we are also very ready to partner with you in coming up with security solutions. The most important responsibility of any government is the protection of the lives and properties of the citizens of our own country. And I believe National Assembly should lead. I want to urge the House of Reps to revisit the issue of state police. We will adopt all strategies, including non kinetic approaches, to ensure that um, these children are rescued. As the security agencies intensify surveillance to rescue the missing children, the hope and prayers of the parents is for the government to put in place all the necessary measures to ensure their children continue pursuing their education without any fear for them to fulfill their dreams. In Kaduna, I am Muhammad Murajigi, NTN News. All right, quite an unfortunate incident. You can only imagine the trauma parents and those abducted are going through. But we'll begin the conversation on assessing the implementation and impact of Safe School Initiative. And the Minister of State for Education, Dr. Yusuf Tanko Sununo, is already seated. Thank you so much for joining us, Honorable Minister. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Now, let's talk about the Safe School Initiative. Before that happened, talking about the implementation, it went through, you know, vigorous engagement with the, you know, relevant stakeholders. And the ministry is part of the committee, you know, set up to implement this. How overwhelming would you say um, this whole scenario of kidnapping, abduction has been for the ministry, especially as this is a drawback to educational advancement? Well, uh, thank you very much. How overwhelming the kidnapper is. Uh, first of all, you must know that, uh, as stated earlier by the uh, Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the one of the purpose of existence of government is to ensure safety of life and properties. And you must of know that the uh, President is a father. He is also the leader of the country. And uh, one such thing happened really Nobody will want, as a father, to have children in a kidnapped den, and uh, definitely is really overwhelming, and uh, it calls for an urgent attention. And uh, that desired attention was also given. Uh, it follows, you can see, the force was directed by Mr. President for, to the security agencies to ensure that uh, those children are uh, returned back to their family and united to the family in the shortest possible time and uh, I believe that the security agencies, uh, we had several discussions with them and they are working in earnest to ensure that the students are uh, released back to their children and you can also hear the commitment from the Inspector General of Police that both kinetic and non-kinetic approaches will be done to ensure that the children are, are released. And uh, on our own part as a uh, Minister of Education that we are saddled with responsibility of policy uh, development, implementation, and supervision. We also, we are also worried. I was also fiscally present to commiserate with the parents of the kidnapped children and also the good people of uh, and government of Kaduna State. And uh, we are all working uh, to ensure that those children are returned back to the school. And uh, the major issue is uh, following our also coming. We had a meeting with the security agencies that are responsible for the national sub school response uh, coordination center to find out what are really the current situation are we really getting information and then are we synthesizing and utilizing the information for a rapid response in order to protect attack or about the attack or even uh, response in order to ensure that we get those kidnapped children out of uh, out of this uh, kidnappers then and also, how do we ensure those who are displaced uh, continue to pursue their educational career uh, without much threat? And uh, my business has really shown that there are a lot to be done. In terms of uh, the center, the National Safe School Response Coordinating Center is supposed to be a national uh, coordinating center that will mm. gather information from the periphery. But during my visit, what I really uh, came to understand is that uh, the input coming to center is not that good enough to ensure that we have such information. Because 
Uh, as of today, only four states in the country have their own centers developed, which is connected to the National Coordinating Center. Okay. And then the other issue, source of information, not only from the state centers, we should also have schools that can relate directly to the center. But unfortunately, very few states, uh, school boards, public, private, and even uh, that are connected to the center. It's on this regard that we have to also come with a, uh, with a statement. Not only a statement, we circularize it, that all state, whether pub uh, schools, whether public or private, private okay. should get coordinated, uh, connected as soon as possible to the center. This will have circularized it. Uh, for the private school, uh, uh, very soon they will get all the additional, the necessary information to get them locked to the center. And also we have circularized it to all the state government so okay. that we can. We also pleaded with state government and are repeating okay. that plea to please as much as possible fast track the formation of their own uh, response, sub school response center so that it can be connected to national. Doing okay. that will give Dr. us Sununu. a dual, uh, a triple advantage. There. First of all, we can have a primary source from the school. We get information directly. We can also get secondary information from the state center if uh, organized. Okay. This will, have, uh, will assist us in having a coordinated approach. Well um, explained there, Honorable Minister. Um, particularly, and we've seen the active and um, proactive measures, you know, put in place by the security operatives who are in charge of these safe school centers you mentioned. Um, but... Let's look at the committee and the implementation. Um, from the report we saw, uh, 144 billion naira was marked. It's a four years plan. And just for last year, 2023, we had the um, report saying that 15 billion has only been spent. So funding is not a challenge. And if the security operatives are doing their own part on one hand, um, what have you gathered, you know, from your findings in terms of monitoring, evaluation? Why is, is there still this persistent attacks on school if the measures are already put in place to some certain extent? Where is the drawback coming from? Well, I, uh, I did mentioned that there is a gap in terms of coordination. Okay. In terms of flow of information to the center, because some of the, uh, a lot of schools are not connected, which so that we get the primary source of information is going to get into the center. So also the secondary that we expect from state centers are also very few that are coordinated, uh, that are connected to the center. That's one of the major issues. Uh, one of the issues. Then the second issues is about uh, what we are uh, we're also addressing now: deployment of technology. While we agree that the center is also uh, technology compliant, but there are also information that should be getting in terms of surveillance that can come to the center because they have already mapped the country. They mm -hmm. also have the vulnerable and security prone uh, areas that can be given special attention. It's the issue here is we have to see how we can fast track deployment of uh, technology in terms of using drone and many other actors that could give us uh, sharper money, uh, monitoring and uh, this. Uh, we also have to know that the, major, the other major issue is that what we are dealing with, though I'm not a security person, but it is certain that us, all of us, that it's not a conventional war, that we are using something new, uh, it's some of the new challenges in terms of security uh, challenges we have in the country. And then the, it also becomes very, very difficult in terms of the operational plan. Okay. These are people that they hardly use the conventional uh, transportation medium that we have. Uh, they are also more informed about the terrain they are operating than even our security agencies. So these are the issues. So for us to beat them, we have to deploy uh, technology that will give us a very good surveillance and can be used in tracking and even in terms of uh, attacking. And okay. uh, I believe that the security agency are doing their own best in that regard. Okay, and this is something that we have to come out in public to say, this is what the security agents are doing. Because, as I mentioned earlier, once that info, in one of the fora, once the information becomes public property, it means that just Ms. Kran can also develop an antidote to circumvent the information that the securities are getting. All we, right. must also, we also have another major issue. We have the to community take a participation break, and contribution uh, in terms of giving credible information. Okay. A lot are serving as informant to just Ms. Kran and uh, preempting the security movement back to the to, to, to the uh, miscrant group and okay. this is also another major challenge i, I know there are a lot others. of challenges honorable minister and we'll pick up with this conversation just after this break please stay tuned
Welcome back. The conversation is still on assessing the implementation and impact of safe school initiative. We'll pick a report now. The spate of attacks and kidnapping of students across the country has prompted the governments of Edo, Delta, Ekiti and Undo states to take more proactive and collaborative steps to safeguard the lives of students and teachers in the states. Jude Abugu brings us a report on the impact of the various security measures put in place by these states to ensure that children and teachers are safe in schools. The recurring abduction of students and incessant attacks on schools across the country has made it imperative for all tiers of government, security agencies and citizens to work together to ensure that schools in the country are safe and conducive for learning. In line with this, Ekiti State, which recorded the kidnapping of six pupils, three teachers and a driver in January this year, has stepped up its complementary role in keeping schools safe. The coordinator of safe schools in the state, Razak Malomo, explained that security agencies are working with school administrators and community leaders to secure schools in the states. We have a program already that we are running. We are going to all the schools in the, in the state to sensitize them on the security protocols for schools, for schools that will make them safe. Although Edo State has not recorded any attack or abduction in schools, the state has enacted policies to safeguard schools. This, the State Commissioner for Education, Juan Oviawe, said include social safeguarding, fencing of school premises, and engagement of local vigilantes to guard schools. We are working with the Ministry of uh, Public Safety and Security. Uh, they are in charge of the Edo State Command and Control Center where there is an emergency number, there's a whole big hall filled with people and computers and cameras. They are saying all that is going on across the state. We are also sensitizing our teachers and school heads to make sure that when there is an emergency, any emergency in school, there is an evacuation plan uh, so that no child is uh, lost in the confusion. Education stakeholders in Delta and all those states are concerned about the impact the situation will have on learning and school enrollment. If you look at such scenarios, it makes it difficult for parents to really want to decide to send their kids to the school, to, to school, to study, and as such, it will affect society in a negative light. They should try as much as they can, first of all, to make sure that the school is secured, maybe by erecting fence around the school, get uh, security agents that will guide the children, just like teachers go to school. They should be there from two, from eight o'clock in the morning till two and uh, two o'clock when they close, so that these children will have the confidence that at least they have people guiding them in school. Stakeholders also advise that schools in rural areas be given more attention in the Safe Schools Initiative, since they are more porous and prone to attacks. In Benin, Jude Abugu, NTA News. All right, let's pick up with our conversation. Honorable Minister, you've just seen the report and some of the respondents talked about, you know, fear from the students or pupils who are in school. But I, I understand that the Safe School Initiative is a collaborative effort between Nigeria, the United Nations and global education advocates. So what is the synergy like and what kind of support are you getting from the international community? Because earlier you were talking about some of the challenges and part of it was the deployment of technology to enhance security architecture. Well, I think uh, you, should, you should know that the uh, Safe School Initiative uh, started following the Safe School Declaration, okay. which uh, tried to make environment for study safe for all children. It has a uh, few components. Uh, one of the major one is to ensure that uh, schools are safe, teachers and students are also safe, and when there is threat to uh, any school, there could be a rap rapid evacuation plan, and when they are planned wherever they are, education should continue, and no school should be used for military activities, because if you use it, it may further prone that school to more attacks. So these are the declarations. And uh, following that declaration, there is also global effort when Nigeria becomes signatory. 
and most especially because of the Chubok uh, kidnappers at then has also made a decision. And there are a lot of uh, international commitment towards raising money. And in Nigeria, that's why we have uh, even the SEF uh, school, uh, SEF school, we have a national coordinator for SEF school financing. And that financing is both the appropriated financing and then the, that is the commitment given by Nigeria and then the one that also given by the international community uh, following the uh, full participation of Nigeria in SEF school declaration. You see the issue that is, you mentioned there are funds. The funds are so many and it has many components in terms of utilization. Hmm. It's not only that provide security uh, architecture, it's also used in training both security personnel in modalities that will be employed to ensure that our schools are safe. It also goes again to also provide their training to key stakeholders in terms of the teachers within the school and also to educate and also train the people within the community. Because if the community itself is uh, secured, hmm. it means the school will also be secured. And uh, part of the challenges that you have mentioned is also seen here. I must commend the issues, the effort of uh, the state government in fencing those schools. Because what we have, and what I also uh, came to understand after my visit yesterday to the uh, National Self Schools Response Center, hmm. is that we have so much, instead of taking uh, security as everybody's business, yeah. this is the one of the important areas, but we also one of the poor, most neglected area. Yeah. For example, you see a lot of school, uh, not fence, even those that are fence, the people there that are serving as a watchman, a watchman in those schools, you see a school with over three or 400 children being manned by an elderly person over 70 years who can hardly even move. The agility to move and then uh, even report is very, very uh, this. So I think uh, we have to be more security conscious and yeah. take the business of security as everybody's duty yeah. so that we can move from saying that when you see something, say, say something, something, but to say when you see something, act to do something. Okay. Yes. And oh. just um, before I let you go, Honorable Minister, advocacy, because this is where advocacy come to play. You want community response. And when you were talking about the security guards for most schools who are really elderly, I've also witnessed that, and it's quite unfortunate. But going forward, what assurance are you giving Nigerians? We want our children safe in school. I didn't get your last question. As in going forward, what assurance are you giving Nigerians to well, assure? Well, uh, going forward, I want, I want to uh, assure Nigerians that we are having a president who is fully security conscious. And that's why despite his pledge that uh, education will receive a boost in the budgetary allocation. Yeah. He has promised that and it comes second to security. So he still prioritized security because the country must first of all be secured before you can even talk of getting to the education. Why well, will agree that getting educated will also have a positive impact in terms of uh, bringing less security challenges. But for now that we have the challenge, we must be able to address the challenge so that we can be, pay more priority to the education thereafter. And uh, we have a political will of Mr. President, and Mr. President is ever ready to ensure that things are done right and wrong. That's why even the, the mantra is the renewed hope agenda. So we should have uh, that hope that very soon, with all the security directives, uh, meetings that is going day and night, we will address those issues. And as soon as that is done, I assure you, what we have now, the infrastructural deficit, is a present commitment to make, to put more funds into education. Hmm. We'll see the light of the day, and I will be hopeful that all our schools will be safe, and our children will be assured to have a qualitative education that has three or four major components. A, 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 a qualitative certification that is backed by knowledge, character, and skill. Because okay. initially we are doing less about skill acquisition. But now, even in the eight-point agenda of Mr. President, tapping for vulnerable skill is a major thematic area. And we are working to see how we can uh, introduce technical, vocational education and training so that we can uh, safeguard the country by producing the quality graduate that we need that will fit of our time and those who are technologically uh, uh, conscious 
and can also apply technology in doing things. And right. I mentioned the issue of technology is very important. Even in the issue of security now, for us to win the war, we must deploy uh, technology because the number of people who come, security agencies we have, may not be adequate enough to cover all the areas. But we must have a, right. uh, a back of a rapid response squad that once the uh, uh, technology detects a threat, we can now move quickly and ensure that uh, a rapid response uh, become positive in terms of its outcome by protecting the school, right. evacuating, and also ensuring that education must continue at wherever we find our children. Indeed, Honorable Minister, we'll leave the conversation there. It's a collective effort to continue to ensure that our security agencies get the desired support. And most importantly, let's keep hope alive because, like they say, there is light at the end of the tunnel. We want to thank you very much, Dr. Yusuf Tanko Sununu. He's the Minister of State for Education. Thank you very much for your time on Weekend Thank Bar. you for also this opportunity to share the, what we are doing with Nigerians. You're welcome. All right, and this is where we take another break. Stay tuned.